Hello friends, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. In this video, we will see that how we can integrate OHS WebKit and OEM practically with the executions. And in part four, we will see the integration of OEM and OID. So the for, for, for more information on, on the concept of OHS WebKit, OEM, OID and the complete integration, you can see my session one and session two on same. Now, this is a basic flow that we had discussed a lot in the session one and session two, how the request is flow from WebGate to OEM to OID. Okay, now in this video, we will see how we can practically implement or how we can practically integrate our WebGate OHS with OEM. So as I have explained in the session two, that for integration of OHS and WebGate, you have only two steps. That means you have to execute only two scripts come with the WebGate and for WebGate OHS and, and OEM integration, you have to create an agent on the OEM console and that will generate few configuration files and that configuration files you need to copy in your WebGate configuration directory. Okay, so now let us first go to the first step, which is the integration of OHS and WebGate. Okay, so I have installed my OHS uh, in Oracle Home as mentioned on the screen inside Oracle Middleware and OHS 12C. And then for WebGate, when I have installed the WebGate, I have selected the location, which is WebGate folder inside my Oracle home. Okay. Now the first command after the installation of your OHS and WebGate is to deploy WebGate instance. Okay. So this is, I have executed on my window machine. So the file name or the script name is not bad and the complete file path is of Windows. Okay. And the parameters that you need to pass on the deploy WebGate instance dot bat is hyphen W and then your complete path of your OHS instance. In this case, my instance OHS instance name is OHS1. And then you have to specify the your Oracle WebGate path, or you can say WebGate home, where you have installed your WebGate. So this is the first command that you need to execute. For, okay. And then after that, second command is you have to execute edit HTTP .exe. Okay, it, it could be .sh in your Linux base or OS base, uh, Unix based operating systems, okay. And the path of this script is shown on the screen, which is inside your WebGate OHS tools and then edit HTTP conf. Okay. And be, but before that, you have to set the library path, as I have mentioned on the screen, which would be your lib directory inside your Oracle OHS home. Okay. And once you will execute this script, the command line argument would be same as we have given on the first script hyphen w and then your OHS instance directory and then hyphen OH and then your WebGate directory. Okay, so these are the two commands that you have to execute. Okay, it will take a fraction of seconds to execute and then it will display success message on the screen. And once both commands executed, it will create a directory with the name of WebGate inside your OHS directory. Okay, where you have your OHS instance directory and where you see all the configuration files of OHS. Inside that, it will create a folder with the WebGate. Okay, and you will see few files inside the WebGate. And then also inside your same OHS folder, it will create a file called webgate.conf, which is the main configuration file for your WebGate. Okay, and it will enable the WebGate inside your httpd.conf file, which is the main configuration file of your OHS. So inside that file, it will add one directory, or you can say one line at the last of the file, which will be include webgate.conf. Okay, so this is the single night that will enable your OEM and OID integration from the WebGate. Okay, that means if this line is enabled, your OHS is integrated with your WebGate and all the requests from your OHS will forward to the OEM via this WebGate. If anytime you want to disable your WebGate or OEM integration, you can just comment this file and restart your OHS and then your complete OEM WebGate integration would be disabled. So this is one and only one liner command, which will include your webgate.com file at the last of your http.conf. Okay, so the command I have given in link in the description of this video, you can take it from there. So this is all about the integration of your OHS and WebKit. Now, second part, as I said, after once you have done with the integration of OHS and OEM, you have to create an agent in the OEM console. Okay. And once you will create the agent, it will create certain configuration files that you need to just copy paste in your WebGate, the directory that is created in the previous step. So for that one, log into your OEM console, click on the agents and then create WebGate. Okay. And then from there, 
create web gate page you have to just you have to just click on the name field and you have to just enter the name So that means you have to just enter the name for your web agent, okay, web gate agent, and then rest of the configuration select the default, okay, and then just click on apply, okay. So once you will click on apply after giving the name, okay, it will give you a confirmation me message that your OM web gate is created successfully, and then it will display a lot of configurations inside that one, okay. And at last, you can see that the primary server lift it is showing as the OM server one, that means OM server one managed server so i have only one uh, managed server there so it is showing primary server list as one and if you have more than one managed server it will automatically display all the managed servers there in the list primary server list and secondary server list is a bit of advanced configuration that we will cover the later sessions when we go for the uh, high availability configuration software over here okay now so as i said once you will create on your uh, webgit agent okay it will create certain configuration files right so the configuration files would be a folder with name wallet and then three files inside that uh, particular folder, okay, with the name cwallet.sso, cwallet.sso.lck and then obaccessclient.xml, okay. So two options are there to, to take these files. So one, once you will create the agent, then you can download it directly from there, okay. So you can download it on your desktop directly and then from there you can copy on your webgate or OHS server, okay. And if you want to copy it directly from the servers without downloading from the console. Then when you create the agent, it create a folder with the name of your agent inside a folder with name output. Okay. And this output folder would be inside your OEM domain directory. So what does it mean? You will, if you, if you want to copy your uh, the web, web agent files, okay, then without downloading it from the console, just go to your uh, server and inside your OEM domain, you will see a folder with name output. Inside that, you will see a folder which is with the same name that you have given for the WebGate agent. Okay. And inside that, you will see the same file. So just go to there and just copy two files that is obaccessclient.xml and cwallet.sso, which will be inside your same above folder, which I have explained just some time back. Okay. Take both files and copy it in your OHS server inside your WebGate config directory. Right. So we saw that when we configure, we integrate our OHS with the WebGate, then it create a folder with name WebGate inside your OHS instance, right? So inside WebGate, WebGate folder, there would be another folder with name config, okay? And inside the config, we have to copy this OBXS client and then see wallet.sso file. And that's it. And then you have to restart your OHS, okay? And now then you go to access any of your web page, which is deployed on your OHS, or maybe you are... Uh, console for your OEM and, and any application deployed on your OEM. Okay, so once you will try to access that one, then it will forward you a SSO page. Okay, and that's all the configuration of your OHS, your WebKit and OEM. And in next session, we will see how we can practically implement or integrate our OEM and OID. That means how we can integrate OEM to get the user ID and password authenticated from the OID. Thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for a few more videos. Thank you.